After a one night stop near the airport of Quito, we drive west to Mindo. The town on the western slopes of the Andes is famous for bird watching and lies in the cloud forest at an altitude of 1,250 meters. We are in Quito and we're driving out of it to get to Mindo. Look at how dense the people live here. This is the mountain that burned two years ago when we were here. We stopped right here next to the fence to watch the helicopters filling up their buckets. And you can still see it must have burnt all the way down to the bottom. I'm sure some people lost their houses here. So this is the uh, UN building from South America. And we're going over the equator in a minute. We've been here two years ago. And just after this roundabout is the equator. Here you can see the big monument, which is not directly on the line. Antinan, it should be now. We're in the northern hemisphere and it's raining. <laughs> so typical. We're on our way to Mindo, but we are in a pea soup again. There's absolutely no way that we can see a thing in the valleys. Hopefully that's not the case in Mindo either. At 2,500 meters, and we're going all the way down to 1,700. So, hopefully, by then the clouds are gone or above us. There should be some views, but not for us today. It was nice and sunny on the other side of Quito. This road makes me really nervous because there's so many landslides. This is just a small example here because every hundred meters minimum is a landslide. Along with road damage. A road with a along with the road damage, yeah, and then has to concentrate like crazy. This is really, really tough for Helen. I mean if you go down, you go down. So now we're turning up to Mindo. It's a very sharp Bend. This is the place to do bird watching, but it's quite a ways down, and there's some. Turn left on Nuko. There's quite some hairpin bends here to get down. So we're in Mindo, the bird's paradise. This is Lin uh, Mindo. Lindo Mindo. That's a challenger. There's lots and lots of birds here just in the town center. This is a real cool building. The Mindo Valley is one of the most heavily visited tourist locations in Ecuador. Nearly 200,000 tourists visit the area annually to enjoy activities such as rafting, tubing, trekking, mountain biking, canyoning, horseback riding and bird watching. This looks like public toilets here in Mindo. The Mindo Cloud Forest is a unique ecosystem in Ecuador that's known worldwide for its biodiversity and birding. It's one of the premier birding destinations in the world. More than 500 different types of birds have been spotted here. We're going for a hike on the San Vicente um, Ranch. The minute we got here it started to rain, but we only waited five minutes, so hopefully we're okay. Our first interesting animal on the path is an agouti. Agoutis are related to guinea pigs and look quite similar, but they're larger and have longer legs. They have five toes on their front feet and three toes on their hind feet. They eat fallen fruit, leaves and roots. They are regarded as one of the few species, along with macaws, that can open Brazil nuts without tools, mainly thanks to their strength and exceptionally sharp teeth. Mr. Hola. 
The Hacienda San Vincente is owned by the Garçon Jaramillo family. It has 200 hectares, or 494 acres, of lush old secondary and towering primary cloud forest. There is a main trail and five side trails in the dense forest. The entrance fee is $6 a person, and the owner gave us a map for all the trails. There's a token. There's another one. Unfortunately, there's a leaf. Ah, oh, now he's looking at me. This is the fourth token we've seen in within five minutes. He can, he's looking down. He's checking us out. The Choco Toucan is a bird native to the Pacific Slope of Western Colombia and Western Ecuador. It's found in the Choco rainforest regions, giving this bird its name. It has a remarkably large bill that is bicoloured, yellow and black, and it lives for 12 to 20 years. It is mostly a fruit-eating bird, but its diet also includes insects, cicadas, lizards, frogs, spiders and tiny birds. Here's another one. It's been waning for a long, long time here, so the path is a little muddy. But we have the whole trail to ourselves. And this is really, really nice. And this is on the map. This is the banyo spot, but there's some really beautiful flowers here. It's a really nice trail. It's also well signposted. We're still on the main trail because we're doing four and three first and then two and one last. When I saw the power of it, I thought. Trail 5 is closed. Too much rain has damaged the path. So we go up to the end of the main trail and then do trail 3 first. It leads to a mirador where you can see the entire Mindo Valley. There's one of these beautiful leaves with a pink flower. This flower is called a pink quill and is part of the bromeliad family and native to the rainforests of Ecuador. It's a very interesting flower, beautiful colour. I didn't reach the lookout point. I might have spotted an eagle They're coming towards us. No, he's going away from us. And he's going into the clouds. Oh, this is the lookout point to see Mindo from the top. Beautiful. I think we are in the left part, in the older part, but obviously there's a more modern part as well. So we bought some huge chicken empanadas in town yesterday. Should I have brought some ketchup and mayonnaise? Are they dry? Yeah, it's okay. Um, I haven't got some chicken yet. <laughs> <laughs> You can see the rain moving into Mindo now. This is called the cloud forest, not for nothing. Because the forest is constantly in the clouds. Now we stop and play dead when we stay. So now we're the green monsters. The rain has started. Here we are, the green monsters. We're in the rainforest, so there's supposed to be rain. But we're prepared, which is good. Helen, ch Helen the zombie, chased away the cows and now keep coming.
<laughs> I think the black one wants the, the white one to go first. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, the little one can can do it. This morning we take a taxi up to the Tarabita station. From Mindo, it costs six dollars and saves us an uphill walk of seven kilometers. The Tarabita is a unique motor-powered cable car that takes us across the Rio Nambio Valley and above the cloud forest to the Nambio Waterfall Sanctuary. This is the engine we have to trust to get across the canyon here. Helen is signing us in and probably writes down that it's uh, our own responsibility. Not sure. The cable car is operated by a motor from an old Nissan 2002 pickup truck. So we're in for an adventure this morning. The Tarabita in Mindo. Cost five dollars to go across and come back. And on the other side we're going to do some waterfall hikes. Hopefully. Hopefully, because the weather is, well, it's not raining yet. No, not yet. So we see. We see, yeah. It's, uh, it's quite it's quite a way down though to get down to the to the waterfalls from what I can see. Hmm. Here comes our basket. The adventure begins. Wow. Ooh. Gracias. Gracias. Muy rápida, ¿no? Más despacio le llevo, ¿quién? Por favor. Quiero tomar fotos también. Uno, dos, oh. The Tarabita Cable spans more than half a kilometre over the river valley. The ride lasts a few minutes and the yellow basket glides 152 metres above the ground. And there is the river. I'm much better off watching everything through the camera. I don't like heights, but we're there. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Winners. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. Ooh. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Gracias. <laughs> that was a quite an adventure. Very nice. There is said to be at least 15 different waterfalls within the Nambia Waterfall Sanctuary. Seven of them are named and marked on the sanctuary's map. A 20 minute hike leads down to the 15 meter high Nambia Waterfall. Route 3 goes to a series of five waterfalls, each within a 5 to 10 minute walk of each other. The largest waterfall in the sanctuary is the 50 meter high Cascada Reina but it's also the furthest away, about one hour and 40 minutes return. So much for a peaceful walk down to the waterfalls. <laughs> We're still in a good mood, it's not raining. Looks like a landslide took out the path here and that's probably why they're repairing it. It's 
a bit slippery of course after all the rain. Oh, it came down. Hopefully it's stable for us to walk down. There's a huge worm or something. It, uh, never seen that one before. He's obviously trying to get across. An earthworm is a terrestrial invertebrate and they lack a true skeleton. They occur worldwide where soil, water and temperature allows, except for Antarctica. Earthworms are commonly found in soil, eating a wide variety of organic matter. They never surface unless there's a landslide. They breathe through their skin, aided by the layer of mucus that they secrete. If their skin dries out, they die. Earthworms are hermaphrodites. Each carries male and female reproductive organs. They can grow up to almost two meters, or six feet. Just to give you an idea of the size, I put my boot next to it. They're building a new trail here. That landslide happened four days ago. And the other trail is not passable anymore. This is where the old path was and it's all been taken down. Wow, the guys are cutting the wood to put into the trail. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a good job. Alan is in spotting mode today. This is a tiny worm, only about, I don't know, five centimeters long, if at all. And it's crawling along here. It's almost like a tiny snake. You could be blind and just feeling its way along. It's not an easy trail to hike. They had a lot of rain here lately and the path is slippery and steep. Thank God we took our walking sticks with us. We must be pretty much the first ones to walk the trail this morning it's just us and nature, and we're lucky to see unusual things on the path that would be gone if lots of other people had been here before us. One of the tree flowers here, it opens like a star. It looks like a star fruit actually. We would have to take our shoes off to see this one, but when you lean over on the sticks, you could actually see it. just walked over this thing there, literally. What a beautiful gecko. Oh, you're beautiful. He's got such a long tail. The tail is like three times longer than him. This lizard is an equatorial anole. It's a female. The males have large throat fans, or dewlaps, that are often brightly coloured. Nambilo! Falls. 
little obstacle here. A man just walked right into the big puddle here. But we've done this stretch before and we know how to balance with our sticks. <laughs> but he sunk in like up to his um, ankles. There is a hairy thing. And now, where are you going? Just drop down on that one. It's going somewhere. We've done the path quite nicely while we were gone. Big steps for Helen. <laughs> we're exhausted. How many hours have we done so far? Uh, we've done, well, almost uh, three. Almost three hours, up and down in the Good. Yeah. Returning. Yeah. Yeah, on the thing. Muchas gracias, cha cha. Oops. Now we're doing the real old granny tour. We're going for a gondola ride. Ready to rumble and roll. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> it's a little slippery, isn't it? I feel like I'm. Para ida y vuelta, ¿cuánto cuesta? Ocho dólares. Ocho. Ciao, ciao. Gracias. Es 20 minutos más o menos, ¿no? Yeah. Okay. Gracias. Super. In the front. Did you want to look sideways? I didn't want to look no. sideways. Oh, this is really nice and relaxing. We actually have a seat belt, so we mm -hmm. can't slip out of this thing here. Maybe I'll take this off already. Yeah, I'll take mine off. I don't have stuff. Ooh. Ooh! It's a 20 minute ride, right over the, the bushes here. This is not my kind of thing, yeah. I, I, when I look through the camera, I'm okay, but yeah, when yeah, I actually look it down yeah. into real life... I'll tell you when the road's coming, if you see it. Yeah, you can see my shoes. We're going right over the trees. Dirty shoes. Dirty shoes. Mm. But uh, we had a super morning. I'm still not raining. It was spitting a bit earlier. It said it was going to rain at one o'clock, and it was spitting at one o'clock. But at the moment... We're good. When, we're good. An when angels travel... Mm. But we've still got three kilometers to walk. Mm, down, down the road, that's true. Down the road. And then we go for a lunch somewhere. I'm hungry. Mm. What mm. do you fancy? Falafels. Oh. <laughs> You've already chosen. Ooh, oh, that's a scary view. Holy <laughs> camoly. <laughs> that is scary. It is quite high. Mm. I think this is worth the $10. Absolutely. Just to go down is 10 bucks yeah, it for two. Us, uh, saves us two and a half kilometers of walking in there on a very muddy road mm -hmm. that we came, drove up in with, uh, with taxi. So we're we still holding on to the rail while I'm holding on well, to I'm the rail. Well, I'm holding on to my sticks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, slowing down. Uh -oh. Take a photo of the two of us. Uh oh, please don't stop right here. Oh, there might be somebody getting on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Getting on, I think. This is the highest spot here. Helen loves the thrill. Yeah, we got we got all for ten dollars. We got stuck because some I think somebody's getting on. And, uh, We're not moving. Chicken shit, Kirsten. We get extra time. It's not a fan of these things. Oh, we're getting back down to the station. That was never twenty minutes, but never mind. Just enough for Kirsten. <laughs> Was super. That was a super ride. The granny tour sometimes really oh, yeah. pays out. I like these. 
we need to get unbuckled. This is why it takes 20 minutes, because you need five minutes down here. So now we're doing the last three kilometers back into Mindo on the road. And it is still smiling about our adventures. He's doing a dance with his tail, that snake. Now it starts to rain. After the sun sets in Mindo, an entirely different cloud forest biodiversity emerges. Reptiles, insects, owls and nocturnal mammals come to life. And so we spontaneously book a night tour for this evening. We get picked up at 7pm at our hostel and then pick up four others, all women. Heather and Kate with their guide Amanda and Nairovis. That looks beautiful. We're driven back up towards the Tarabita and are dropped off at Eric's house. He's Canadian but has been living in Mindo for the last four years. He takes us on a super two-hour tour around his property for $15 a person. That's a lot more. This might be the closest you'll ever be, ever get to one. Wow. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry, you look beautiful, by the way. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
into the clicking sound. He wants to mate with you. <laughs> he wants to mate. Once you were talking to her yellow. Yeah. Oh no, oh, that was an actual... It's, it's, it's got it. It's, it's yeah. got a, an insect on its leg. Oh yeah? Little yeah. spider. Oh, he's uh, pumping his... Uh, wow, wow. Beautiful. Wow. It's still is a half a tadpole. Oh, you're on the stick. Oh, Where am I? Oh, yes. Okay, but I think, yeah. Did I move the frogs? Before the walk, Eric stuck a few bananas into a tree to attract fruit bats. Lots of them swarm around us. We even switch the light off again and can feel their wings right next to our faces. Kind of scary, but also fascinating. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he was sitting there. They're really hard to capture on video because they're so fast. But Kirsten managed to get a few really good photos by just pointing the camera at the tree and blindly pressing the shutter. It's a really cool tour. There is a green, quite big palm tree frog. No, it's, just, it's not very big. It's not very big. He's shining his torch on it, so you can see. It's another stick insect. Cool. That looks cool. Wow, mm. very cool. That's a huge stick insect. Very skinny, though. Wow. So beautiful. Another stick insect. <laughs> That's so cool. yeah. Such a massive body in the Katie head. dead. Katie. Hmm? What is it called? Whoa. Katie dead. Katie it's dead. Like a, we call it cheese. Looks like Katie. a leaf. Yeah. Katie, Katie dead. Yeah. It's a Katie dead. What is it called again? This one's actually called a harvestman. It's a cool thing. I thought it was just a spider, an exo exoskeleton spider. If you if you if you use the real light, it's kind of brownish. But if you go on the purple light, it looks totally white. There's a scorpion in there. He's a nice one now. I've got my feet in the way. <laughs> oh, he's moving. He's moving. Are these ones deadly? Good question. I don't know. This is a super oh, scorpion. Your camera is to get that far. Right where my flashing light is. Mm -hmm. But he's got the tail up, or she. Mm -hmm. Hold it, hold it, hold yeah, the light on yeah. there. He's gone under there. That's a cool thing, the scorpion's moving. Oh, that one's really behind cool. the leaf. Mm -hmm. oh, behind the leaf. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's close. Whiptail scorpion spider. They can grow up to 70 centimeters. I, I read today because we took a photo of that already in the in the Cuyabino part. No, Antina, wasn't it, Hannah? Mm, Antina. Oh, that's a cool shot. Wow. It's not hurting. Yeah, whatever. It's a cool way to die. You guys can tell a good story, okay? Yeah. See, it does have these really long legs to coordinate them all. Mm. Really cool. Wow. Sorry to bother you, buddy. Okay, that's enough experimenting for now.
Well, that's like a, like a, a that's really ten foot tennis. wingspan. Nice cleaning. Wow. Well, what a great tour. In our next video, we drive along the Pacific coast of Ecuador and get shaken by a 6.0 earthquake. And in Puerto Lopez, we watch the fishermen coming in with their catch.